So in her opinion, there's no wrong way to do this. It's work on both. So let's take a look at what actually gets in the way. And here are the seven. And again, you will have the opportunity to, we're gonna, we're gonna look at these, I'm gonna explain what they are, and then you're gonna have an opportunity to work with people in the room to figure out what some of the answers are. Because the answers are within us. There's Coach Talk for you. The answers are within us. We know what the answers are. There's some reason we're just not doing it. And if you don't know what the answer is, somebody around you has the answer. And if you look around, there's an awful lot of females and a couple of brave men in here that can help you get the answer. So, here's what number one is. And these are not in any specific order. It's not like, and the survey said that the topic, no, there's just seven random things here. So the first one is not making your desires known. When I think about myself in my 20s, and I was at that small savings alone, and I began to go up the ranks, and I was the only woman that was doing that, Actually, that's not true. There was a couple of very senior, older women, they were probably my age now, ours, and I was in my 20s, so they looked very old to me. <laughs> so, they were in senior positions. Again, going back to 1978, 1980, for those of you in the workforce, if a woman was in a senior position, what did she do to help women around her get into those positions? Not much because they had clawed their way there. And I got to honor what they went through. So a lot of times the attitude was, nobody helped me get here. You got to rough it up and tough it up and get there yourself. And to some extent, I get that, because if you weren't fiercely independent and ready to plow through walls, you were not going to make it to one of those senior positions. I am happy today to say that I hope that women are working together to get each other promoted and into satisfying jobs. So, not making your desires known, I sit and I say, well, my boss will realize that I'm doing it, and then they'll tap me, and then I won't have to post for it, and everything will be peachy, and I'll get that job. And so, some of you in the, in the audience may have had that happen, um, and others, not so much. And especially in an organization like Wells Fargo, where you've got a posting system, most of the jobs end up in the posting system. So we have to post, we have to get in the running, and we could be really, really good, and it just depends on a number of factors about who's in the pool with us and what the team's you know, spot is that needs to be built. So it doesn't even matter that you are that good sometimes. So that's not making our desires known, but if we don't, we won't get there probably. We might get blessed, but we probably won't get there. Not securing advocates. What would you say because there's advocate and there's mentor in the workplace. What's an advocate? Who's got a good definition or wants to throw some words out there? An advocate is a person who's going to help speak for you when you're not there. Bingo. So they speak for you when you're not there. And what does a mentor do? Guides. Okay, what else? Yep. So. Sorry, a lot of noise over there. Um, so the mentor is guiding, coaching, offering options, helping you along, saying, I've been there, follow me. Um, but an advocate is going, and they could be an advocate for you. But an advocate might also not be your mentor. Now, I am blessed to have a wonderful boss at Wells Fargo. She is, and I don't say this lightly, because I study this stuff. She is the best boss I've ever had. So if you ever get a chance to work with Sherry Wofford, do it. So, Sherry is my advocate. When she is um, in the room and I'm not, I know she's talking about me. And she'll even call me into her office to meet someone, or she'll send somebody to me for coaching, because um, I can coach as part of my job. So, it's really cool that she really understands me and who I am, and I have no fears about being having an advocate. But I've been in jobs where I never felt like I had one, and I didn't know what to do to get one, and so sometimes it's the organization, and sometimes you have to actively campaign for it in one way or another. You have to get in front of that person who has the seat at the table because you don't have it yet. So that's one thing that gets in our way. Rounding down rather than rounding up. Here's what that sounds like. Rounding down, you look at a job posting and you say, there are six things on there that are, oh, okay, I got four and a half. 
So I guess I'm not going to go for it because I don't have that other one and I only have a piece of that one. And they're going to catch me in the interview. I know they are. They're going to catch me. So let's not go through that. And we hold ourselves out. We round down rather than rounding up. Now that, I'm told, is another thing that men don't do so much. They go, eh, four out of six. Let's go. <laughs> That's pretty good odds. Let's do it. And sometimes confidence will work for you. It, confidence almost always works in your favor. So the rounding down rather than rounding up is one thing that women tend to do. Now again, in our posting system, there are the minimums you have to meet. But we're not talking